Hello, my lovelies. It's Susanna, and today I want to show you how to solve this problem. Which numbers fit into the yellow fields so that all equations are correct? Find all solutions. Okay, so we want to find the numbers that are missing here. I call this number A, this B, C, and D, and we want to find these variables so that all of these equations here are correct. So let's write down the equations. So the first one, we take this one here, so A times B equals 15. The second one, maybe we take this one, A plus C equals 3. Our third one, we take this, C minus D equals 5. And the last one is this one here, so B plus D equals 12. Four equations, four variables. So let's try and find a solution for this system of equations. If we take a look at our equations, in the first one we only have the variables a and b, in the second one a and c, so a is part of the first equation and the second equation, and by the way it is nowhere else, so just in the first two. Then we have c and d, so this means that c is also only part of these two equations, and d is only part of these two equations. So it looks good that we can solve this system of equation by inserting equations into other equations, so that would be the plan. So let's just start somewhere with the first equation and let's see what we can do there. We have a times b equals 15, so we could solve this equation for a, and then insert the value for a into the second equation here for our a. That would be the plan. So let's solve this equation for a. We want to get rid of the b, so we divide both sides by b. It's always important if you divide by a variable that you make sure that this variable is not equal to zero, because we're not allowed to just divide by zero. But could b be zero if we have a times b equals 15? No, that's not possible. If b was zero, then we have a multiplied by zero, and this could never be 15. So b is not zero, so it's okay to divide by b here. Then on the left side, this cancels out, and we only have a left, and here we have the 15 over B. So this is my value for A, and I want to insert this now here in the second equation, so that the second equation looks like this. Instead of A, I write my 15 over B that I just found. Then I have my plus C, and on the other side I have the 3. Okay, let's just solve this equation now for c, because then we can insert this for c in the third equation, and then we can go on like this. So that's the plan, but first of all, we have to solve this equation for c. So we want to get rid of this part here, so we just subtract it on both sides, and then we get these two cancel out and only c is left, and on the other side we had the 3 and we subtract this part here. So we solved this for c now, we want to insert this on the next page here for c, but first of all I replaced the first equation by this, what we found for the first equation, and I replaced on the next page the second equation by this, what we found for the second equation. So it looks like this now. This is our first equation, so it is solved for A, and the second equation is solved for C. Because now we can insert this into the third equation for C here, so we get in the third equation. Instead of C, we write down this part here, so 3 minus 15 over b, then we have the minus d, and on the other side we have the 5. And now again, we solve this equation now for d, because then we can insert this in the fourth equation for d. 
So if we want to solve this for d, maybe this time we take this minus d and put it on the other side. So we can do this by adding d here and add d here as well. So our d will jump from the left side to the right side. So here only these things are left. So the 3 minus 15 over b because these two cancel out. And on the other side we had the 5 and we add the d now. To solve for d, we just want to get rid of the 5 here, so we subtract it on both sides. Like this, we get 3 minus 5 equals negative 2. Then we have the minus 15 over b. And on the other side, these two cancel out and only our d is left. Okay, now we solve this equation for d. D. We're going to insert this for d in our last equation on the next page. But there I also replace the third equation. So instead of writing this here, I take this version of the equation from now on. But I switched these two sides. So I start with d equals. So it looks like this here d equals this, what we just found. So now let's replace that in our last equation. So the fourth equation looks like this, b plus d. So instead of d, we're going to write this here. So we have plus minus 2, so it's minus 2. And plus minus this is minus 15 over b. And on the other side, we have the 12. Now, can you see it that this is an equation where we only have b as a variable in here? So that means that we can solve this equation for b and then we found our value for b. How can we solve this for b? Well, b is part of the denominator here. To get b out of here, we can multiply by b. So we take the left side and multiply the whole side by b. And also on the other side, we multiply by b. So what do we get here? If we multiply b with every element in our parentheses here, we have b times b equals b squared. b times negative 2 equals negative 2b. And then b times negative 15 over b. It's going to be negative. And b times 15 over b b cancels out and only the 15 is left. And on the other side, we have our 12b. Now, this is a quadratic equation. We have a part with b squared, a part with b, and a part where we don't have any b. So we can solve this by bringing everything onto one side. So we take the 12b and put it on the left side by subtracting 12b on both sides of the equation. We get b squared, then minus 2b minus 12b equals minus 14b. Then we have the minus 15 here. And on the other side, these two cancel out and we have a 0. OK, let's solve this equation for b. You can always use the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations. But if the numbers look quite nice to us, so negative 14 and negative 15, then you could also just factorize the left side. And this is a much faster way to solve this equation. We have b squared here, so we know that b is going to be the first part of this parentheses and also the first part of this parentheses. Because if we want to multiply, we have b times b, which equals b squared then which would be the first part. And now we have to find these numbers in here. So we have to find a number, I call it x, and another number, I call it y, so that if we multiply these two numbers, so if we multiply x by y, we have to get this number here that doesn't have a b, so the negative 15 has to be the result. And if we add these two numbers, so if we do x plus y. As a result, we have to get this number that is here in front of our b, so the negative 14. So let's try and find two numbers. If we multiply them, we get a result of negative 15. 
This means that one number has to be positive and the other number negative. Otherwise, we don't get a negative result here. So, for example, it would work to take 1 times negative 15, right? This is a product of two numbers. The result is negative 15. But it's not the only possibility that would work if we switch the sign. So we say we take negative 1 and multiply it by 15. This would also be a possibility to get a result of negative 15. There are more possibilities, but we don't have to go through all of them. We always have to check our second condition here. So if we add the two numbers, do we get a result of negative 14? Let's try it. If we add 1 and negative 15, do we get a result of negative 14? Well, yes, because we have 1 minus 15 here, which equals negative 14. So this first combination already works. We don't have to check more of them. So we know that we found our numbers. It's 1 and negative 15. So we insert them here now for our x. We take our positive number, our positive 1 in here. And for the second number, we just take the second number here, the negative 15, but also as a negative 15 with the sign. And now it's easy to solve this equation here because we have a product. This times this equals 0. This is only possible if either this first part equals 0 or this second part equals 0. So we split this one equation into two equations. So either what we have in here, either the b plus 1 equals 0 or what we have in here, the b minus 15 equals 0. Let's solve this cute little equation for b. We subtract 1 on both sides. So we have b on the left side. This cancels out and we have 0 minus 1 equals negative 1. We found a first value for our b, by the way. And here, if we want to solve for b, we just add 15 on both sides of our equation and then we get b. B, these two cancel out and here we have our 15. So we found two different values for our B, which is not a problem. We just have to check both. So the 15 and the negative 1, we take both, go back to our system of equations here and try to find for the case that B equals 15. Let's try to find the values for A, for C and for D. And the same here, if b equals negative 1, let's try to find then the values for a, c, and d. Let's start with this. b equals 15. So what is my a if b equals 15? 15 over 15 equals 1. So this is my a. What is my c? Well, I have the 15 in here as well. So I subtract 1 here. 3 minus 1 equals 2. And my d, I have 1 here again. So negative 2 minus 1 equals negative 3. And let's check if the fourth equation is valid as well. So if I add b and d, so 15 plus negative 3, which is 15 minus 3, Yes, this equals 12. So this combination here is valid. We found a first combination. Let's check if we find a second combination with b equals negative 1. So we put in negative 1 for our b. So for our a, we have 15 over negative 1, which equals negative 15. For our c, we put in the negative 1 here. We have negative 15 over negative 1, which equals plus 15. So 3 plus 15 equals 18. And for our d, we have the negative 1 in here. So we have the plus 15 here again. 15 minus 2 equals 13. And let's check the last equation. b plus d. So negative 1 plus 13 is that 12. Yes, it is. So also this combination is valid. So we found two different combinations. And here it also said find all solutions. So we found 
several solutions. Let's check if this works everything here with our red solution. So A equals 1, B equals 15, C equals 2, and D equals negative 3. 1 times 15 equals 15, 1 plus 2 equals 3, uh, 2 minus minus 3, so 2 plus 3 equals 5, and 15 plus negative 3 equals 12. Yes, this works. You could also check if the green solution is valid, but it should be. And then we found a solution to our problem. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments how you solved this problem. I wish you a wonderful day, and I hope to see you on one of my next videos. Take care.